We're going to move on to level lines. You guys cool with everything so far? You happy? Moving along good enough? Speak up. I won't listen. Okay. Round reels. Why do I use a round reel versus a low profile reel? Why do I even use these things at all? I hate them because all I do is bird nest. It's the right tool for the job. <clears throat> this little guy right here, Garcia 4600, gear ratio 5 3 to 1. Okay? Why would I use a level wine this small? I don't like to throw crankbaits, little ones or not, with one of these. I want to do it with this. Okay? How many of you have one of these at home, a level wind? It's about that wide. Holds about 6,000 yards of line. Got, I mean, you have one. Everybody's got one, right? Okay? Why do we have one? Because I know I'm going to get spooled today. Today's the day. 6,000 yards of line on that big northern. Okay? Right tool for the job. How many of you know why you have a gear ratio on a reel? What is that 5, 3 to 1? What the? I just want to throw it. Okay? Right tool for the job. This is the smallest body round reel that Garcia makes. Calcutta makes like a 100 or a 150. There's some other manufacturers that make them. Okay? The smaller that reel is, the less it has to travel back and forth, the lighter the line I can throw with it. Same thing for the spinning reel. I can throw a two pound test in that little 800, 801. I'm not gonna throw that well with that bigger one. It has to travel a greater distance, okay? You guys watch the musky shows and stuff out there, those guys got that 80 pound test braid, the reel's like, I mean, it's a winch, okay? Because it's the right tool for the job. What we've got right here, if I'm gonna crank, I've got some reels that you can't buy anymore that are four, four to one, and it is a slow road to China. I crank and crank and crank, and it feels like you're going nowhere, okay? How many of you have been out throwing spinner baits and the other day you're going, oh, wow, my hand hurts, can't hold on to the reel anymore? It's because you were using a reel that had too fast a gear ratio, and you were working it to death, trying to just turn it, man, okay? I take this cranking rod, or this spinnerbait rod, if I'm doing cranking, I'm eight to 10 pound test, that's what I like. Eight to 10 pound gives me the best diving depth on my plugs, okay? The second reason why is it's five, three to one. It is slow. If I got a big old spinnerbait on it with big willow leaf blades and I'm going to throw it all day long, this is going to allow me to just, I'm not even going to know it's there. Did you guys see the night walleye show? Yeah. Chad caught the big, oh, Chad. I hooked that fish and gave it to him. <laughs> okay. I got a cranking rod. He said, I want to crank or however it worked out. And I said, here, try this. Give us a try. First thing he did was, whoo, that is light. And then he threw it out and he went. You don't even hardly feel it, guys. It's a gear ratio thing. You know you use block and tackle to pull logs out of the woods, setting up elk camp or anything like that? The more block and tackles you put at different angles does what? Reduces the amount of pull so you get more leverage. It's a gear ratio, same thing. If I get on my mountain bike and I'm in the best shape that I am, which is great, I can go all the way up to the highest speed gear, which I can hardly turn, but I climb a hill, just like Lance Armstrong. It's beautiful. It's not gonna happen. What do you do? A 10 speed's got 10 speeds. You put it in the lowest one possible so you can, what, get up the hill. Same principle. Okay? What's making me mad is manufacturers now. We got a 7 1 to 1. Man, you're going to blaze that. Whew. Well, yes. But you guys don't know what do I use that for? Cranking, spinnerbait fishing, 5 3 to 1 gear ratio. Lower if you can find them. Small. 
fits in my hand nice. I can throw a lighter weight line on it so I can make my crankbait achieve its depth. I can make long casts with it to get the crankbait down, to stick, keep the spinnerbait in the strike zone longer. Okay? Right tool for the job. Low profile. Low profile reel. First reason it came out, if you don't have hands big enough to hang on to one of these, you can hang on to one of these. Okay? Advantages, disadvantages of low profile. One, it's easier to hang on to. Okay? They're making them now in faster speeds. Six, four to one is what this one is right here. And guys, you can go out and crank with a six, four to one and spinnerbait but it will make you tired. So you say, okay, Seth, what are all these high-speed reels for? This is about as universal as you'll get, guys. If you can't find a 5-3 to 1, get a 6-4 to 1 if that's all you can find, but please look. Find a lower gear ratio for the cranking, okay? What this is for, jerk baits, okay? We're retrieving with the reel. If for some reason, I want to take like a rocket shad. It's a small spinner bait, but it's heavy. Use it for smallmouth. And you want to blaze it as fast as you can. That's where the gear ratio comes in. It's a small spinner bait. I can burn it fast all day and not wear myself out. Okay? Flipping, pitching. Some of these have bars on them. Chad's got a couple of them where he just hits the bar, pitches the bait out, releases the bar or they'll have a flip and switch, where you just flip it, engage it, throw it out, and as soon as you release up, it's on again. You're engaged, okay? <sighs> Top water baits, like the seven one to one, great for buzz baits. You gotta keep them up on the top. Fast gear ratio, keeps them on the surface, keeps it where it needs to be. If you're really working a, a walking bait hard, prop baits hard, when you, when you rip down on a prop bait and you bring it forward, you got to get the slack back out. A couple turns, boom, it's there. You're not cranking the daylights out of it to catch up. Okay? If you're burning, say, my friend and I, John, down at Grangeville, I don't know if you guys saw the show, we got a 6.2 and a 6.9 small way down at Door Shack. I had my 4.4 four to 1 cranking reel. John had a spinning reel, and his motto is as fast as you can turn it. Doesn't matter if it's the dead of winter or middle of summer. It's just what he does. Okay? He was killing me. Well, his spinning reel was faster than my cranking reel. Okay? At that point in time, I was wishing I'd have had one of these to just get that speed for the strike. Okay? But if I threw on a crankbait this size, see the size of that lip? You're not cranking it that fast. Okay? It's pulling too hard, it's gonna wear you out. Okay. Now when you get up to the big baits, guys, and I'll bring these in, the big swim baits, I'll bring them in when we get to the bass. At that point in time, I want a big round reel. A Garcia, the old 5,500 bodies, 6,500 body, which this is a line counter trolling reel, but that's a 6,500 body. Remember how I talked to you about the size here? See this? See the difference? Okay. Why do I want the big body over the small, okay? When I bring in a three, four ounce swim, swim bait, I'm not throwing it on eight to 10 pound test. I'm throwing it on 30 pound test stealth braid, 50 pound braid, 30 pound mono, because the sheer inertia of me casting is gonna break that. It's gonna bust that line, okay? So for one, I can't get that many spool wraps of that heavy line on this, okay? The other thing it's gonna do, because it doesn't have to travel very far, it's gonna come off there extremely fast and you're gonna bird nest, okay? That's why you see the guys using the big bodied reels when they're musky fishing, okay? They got a 100 pound test, Dacron, braids, heavy stuff. Gotta have the capacity, I gotta have it when I cast, to throw it, it's got to take a long time to go back and forth so it doesn't try to jump on me. 
right tool for the job. When you get up into that ratio, those big baits like that, those big reels, excuse me, all of a sudden, like this trolling reel, what was this one, Randy? Five three to one? Five one to one, a lot of trolling reels are. Because what are you doing? You're letting out 200 feet of line, you're trolling, and you gotta crank it all back in. You gotta have that, you're gonna wear yourself out if you got a high speed. You're dragging all that back in. Gear ratio, guys. Very important. One more quick thing. Okay, everybody knows how to set up their bait caster so they don't bird nest, correct? Not really. Okay. The first one of these I bought, my mom bought it for me. It was a birthday gift because I didn't like toys. It's about five years old. All I did was play and play and play with that thing. I didn't know what it was. I knew it was a reel, but I didn't know how to use it. Okay. See this guy over here? This is our brake. Okay. All right, cool. That's our brake. What they told me was I pushed the button and I let it drop 12 inches, and if it stops, that's set up fine. Okay. There's only one of these that I know of that's made that has a magnetic brake on it. That's that little guy on the side. See that? That's a magnetic brake. It's not a ceramic pad or a pin pushing against the spool. It's magnets. Okay? This is a working reel. Big heavy baits. Tighten the brake up. Let it drop 12 inches. Sometimes on those heavy baits, it's not even moving. Because of that inertia, that thing going, it's going to take it out. Okay? Calcutta's, you can pull them apart. They give you plastic pucks, three different kinds, I believe. They're different colored. Those are your magnet settings. You got to tear it apart to do it. Low profile reel. Tool for the job. If we go out and it's windy and I want to throw this crankbait and I know I want to use this reel because it's the right ratio to do the job, but the wind is blowing. And I don't cast with the wind ever. And you're going to find out why tomorrow. I always cast into the wind. Casting into the wind with one of these, almost impossible. You rear up, you toss, it gets just over Mick's head, gust of wind hits it, and whoo, there goes that 50 cents a line you just bought at the discount shop. The magnet, guys, is for wind control. When you cast, you set your magnet up free or usually one click just for normal use. If it gets windy, the first thing I do is I go clicky click, turn it up two or three and cast. I don't change my brake because it's already set. What the brake does when I whip into it, it goes out. If a gust of wind hits it, the magnets grab it, slow it down. They slow it down, okay? So we tie the bait on, we click it. I like to slow drop because I'm a th I ride it. During fishing season, when I'm doing a lot of casting, my thumb is ugly. It's gross because I ride it. Chad, Chad knows all about it. I ride, I ride it. My brake is right here. But I still use that magnet because that magnet senses speed change before I can. Okay? So you adjust the magnet for the wind. Don't just turn and start throwing with it, man. No, I'm making a thousand yard cast. Yeah, you're not going to catch much either. I said you'll find out tomorrow. Okay.